Hi, this is uh, Professor Schwartz, and welcome to Anthropology 220, Introduction to Archaeology. Um, today, I, in this video, I want to just kind of introduce myself a little bit, give you a little bit of information about my background and how I became interested in archaeology, um, and also a little bit about the class and what we'd be doing this semester. Uh, this class is focused mostly on archaeological methods. So you, we're going to learn how archaeologists do research, how they can say the things they can about the past, how archaeological data works, how to interpret archaeological data. This is why it's one of the uh, Gen Ed Foundations classes for the social sciences. Uh, you guys will get to gather your own data and analyze your own data, but I'll talk about more of that in just a minute tell you a little bit about um, archaeology and how I came uh, to be an archaeologist and some of my interests in archaeology. Um, so <clears throat> when I was a kid I was interested in history, especially medieval history. Um, the, the little I knew about archaeology was that it, it dealt with, with history, with uh, digging up sites, with finding uh, cities and treasures and things like that. Uh, you know, I was fascinated by Heinrich Schliemann, who uh, excavated Troy. Uh, I was able to visit in, you know, middle school and high school uh, some of the Native American archaeological sites in the southwest, such as Mesa Verde, you can see here, which is in Colorado. But I didn't really understand what archaeology was. Uh, and I didn't really understand what archaeologists did until I actually got to college. And while I was in college, uh, I was at a small liberal arts college in Pennsylvania. They didn't have a lot of archaeology courses, but uh, down the road was the University of Pennsylvania, which did have a lot of archaeology classes. So I would hop on the train uh, some days during the week in order to take a class at the University of Pennsylvania. They had a really excellent archaeology and anthropology museum. And I took a class basically like the one you're taking, uh, Origins of Civilization, uh, with this guy, Bernard Wales. You can see some of the things that they had in the museum. The class was in the museum during breaks in the class. I would walk around the museum. Uh, and this is when I realized uh, what archaeology actually is, what it does, um, and how it's a little bit different than what many people uh, think about archaeology. Archaeology is not just digging for things and gathering new information. It's not just adding more detail to what we already know about ancient civilizations. It was in this class that I learned that archaeology is really focused on big questions, right? Big research questions. That is, we don't, you know, archaeologists don't dig just to dig. Archaeologists dig to answer questions, and the questions that archaeologists are interested in are some of the really large questions in the social sciences, uh, such as how did we evolve? You know, how does that impact our health today? Um, why do we live in societies where a few people have most of the wealth and power and most of the population does not? Um, as compared to the kinds of societies that we lived in for most of human history, which were small groups of maybe 30 people, where most people had roughly the same amount of power. How did we go from small societies like that to large-scale societies? How do societies work? Can we compare societies throughout the world? These were some of the big-picture questions. And one of the questions that was brought up in the class that I was particularly interested in was how did civilizations begin? Uh, I thought that was a really interesting question. And there's a question that archaeologists were looking at in different areas of the world and trying to come up with answers. So I thought if I become an archaeologist, that's something that I would like to study. So in undergrad, I worked at, a, at several sites. This is a site in Arizona. Um, which was ancestral to the modern Hopi Native Americans who live there. Uh, this is a site in Israel. It's a biblical city called Tel Hatzor, mentioned in the Bible. This is a cave site also in Israel that I worked in, which had Neanderthal remains in it. Uh, then after I graduated, I went to graduate school at Northwestern University 
and I uh, my PhD was on this archaeological site which was one of it was an ancient trading site and it was from the very earliest civilization, Mesopotamia, and it was uh, part of the first colonial trading system. Not the first trade, but the first time that people from Mesopotamia set up a colony somewhere else nor the trade. So I was particularly interested, and it was, it was on the Euphrates River, so here I, here I am on the Euphrates. Most of you probably remember from uh, you know, sixth grade that Mesopotamia means between the rivers. It's between the Tigris and the Euphrates. That's mainly the area that I was interested in, <clears throat> which had the first civilizations. And we're going to talk about Mesopotamia in the class. Uh, this is the beginnings of writing in Mesopotamia, and you can see some of these strange uh, idols. So I was really interested in the very first uh, civilizations. And from there, I've moved on to other things. I've worked in other areas. I've, uh, this, this is in Turkey. I've worked in Turkey. I'm also doing archaeology, archaeology locally, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. As I said before, uh, this class fulfills a general education requirement in the foundations and social and behavioral sciences, um, anthropology and archaeology, is, as we're going to talk about, a part of anthropology um, is a social science. So it's looking at human behavior. Um, it's uh, focused on uh, things that are sometimes hard to quantify, right? That is, uh, you can get a more accurate, let's say, measurement of uh, the amount of hydrochloric acid in a solution than you can, let's say, quantify the thoughts and feelings and behaviors of people. Right? So it's, uh, it has those kinds of challenges that are found in many of the social sciences like psychology, like sociology, right? But archaeology is different. We're going to look at those differences. Whether or not you're an archaeologist or not even interested in archaeology, I think you will find the class useful because uh, by the end of the class, you will have done an independent project where you collect data, analyze data using, you know, basic Excel uh, spreadsheets, uh, interpret the data and present the data. And that is important in a, in a wide variety of careers. Uh, so it will give you a good background and a good understanding of how things work. It will kind of stretch your thinking a little bit, maybe thinking outside of your own uh, discipline. If ever you need anything, um, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, my email is schwamar at gvsu.edu. I wish it was shawarma, because that's a tasty sandwich. But uh, what, like many of your emails, what uh, IT did was take the first five letters of my last name and the first three letters of my first name and stick them together. And we got shawarma, which not the greatest, but uh, that's my email. So anytime, please feel, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, we can, if you want, meet in person on campus. Um, we could also meet uh, virtually on Zoom or just email, whatever you uh, prefer. Okay, so what do I hope you're going to get out of the class? Well, we're going to be doing a variety of hands-on projects. You're going to be doing hands-on projects outside the class on your own. You're going to be doing some um, work that entails this uh, interactive software, which I'm going to talk more about, and you're going to be doing a larger scale independent research project. So by the end, you should be able to understand archaeological theories and methods uh, and how to evaluate these. Uh, you should understand the archaeologists learn and about and reconstruct the past, you know, and, you know, this is important because a lot of these um, methods overlap with other fields like geology. So when ge geologists talk about climate change, archaeologists, uh, ancient climate change, archaeologists are using the same data set and usually overlap in terms of uh, the, the science involved. Um, so, uh, you know, you'll have a better understanding of how these things work. Relate the knowledge of archaeology to cultural processes, right? So you're, you sort of understand, oh, okay, 
um, I understand how behavior leaves behind a material or physical trace in the environment. Assess hypotheses and link appropriate data. So you will understand again more about the scientific method and how the scientific method uh, works. We'll talk a little bit more about the scientific method. Everyone knows a little bit about it, um, but not many people realize that we essentially use the scientific method on a daily basis um, when we're trying to figure out cause and effect. Understand how research is done, right? Learn how to collect, analyze, and manipulate data, and then use your analytical thinking skills. Um, so I talked a little bit more and sent a couple emails out about revealing archaeology 6.0. Uh, the, the company, I think this was kind of a nice thing to do, uh, reduced their price by um, a third from $75 to uh, sorry, $75 to $50. Um, it's an interactive software package which you will download from their website. I, I, I'll show you more of that in just a, in a, uh, just a couple of videos. Um, one, once you're hooked up to the internet and you have your own account, uh, whenever you work on it, it will save your progress automatically. Um, and so uh, no matter you know when you work on it, um, it will keep a running update of the things that you have completed. Uh, the reason why I prefer revealing archaeology to just a standard paper textbook is, again, the interactive portion. I think that it makes things a little bit clearer than just reading about them. Okay, in terms of how uh, you're going to be graded and the kinds of things you'll work on this semester, you're going to have, uh, as we said before, those revealing archaeology interactive problems. That's 15% of your grade. Labs that you do on your own and that we do in class will be another 15%. Uh, the final paper will uh, entail you collecting data, uh, analyzing the data, presenting it in a paper. That will be 24%. And then we will have three exams uh, throughout the semester. They will not be cumulative. The last exam is the final exam. It will be on the last third of the class. So it's essentially five weeks, then an exam on that material, another five weeks, an exam on that portion of the material, and then another five weeks and an exam on that portion of the material for a total of 15 weeks for the semester. Um, it's for a total of 45%. Uh, Let's take a little look at the, uh, the syllabus, and then I will uh, give you a little bit of tour of the Blackboard site too. Um, so I have the syllabus with hyperlinks, so if you're ever looking for a certain section, you should be able to find it up here in the table of contents. A, a little section here, just kind of reiterating what you've probably heard from many people at the university to, you know, uh, take care of yourselves, obviously, during this time, uh, but also to let the university know if you're having any sort of challenges with health or uh, financial difficulties. And if I can't help you directly, I will put you in touch with uh, the people who can. Um, okay, well, let's take a brief look at uh, the way I have uh, the course set up in the different weeks. Well, this is a little bit about general education, the specific gen ed goals that we're going to have. I'm going to assess you uh, in terms of critical thinking this semester and submit that information to the general education office. I'm required to do this occasionally uh, so they could see how gen ed is working in the different disciplines. Um, okay, so here again is my information, my email. Um, we are going to look at, again, how archaeology works. Uh, so hands-on activities are needed uh, in this class so that we could kind of understand how methods, specific methods work. Because it's a hybrid format, we will meet in person, but the quote-unquote lectures will be on online videos that will be asynchronous, so you can watch them around your own schedule. I will tell you sometimes, though, please make sure to watch such and such videos before you come in and do the lab. Uh, so not all weeks, but most weeks. Uh, we will Not this week, and probably not next week because of Labor Day, but starting in week three, um, you will, and you know, I'm going to 
think about this. I'm, you may have to come in next week, not on Monday, but uh, on your own in order to do one lab. And I'll talk a little bit more about our lab, right? but you'll come in to do some of these hands-on activities and you'll submit them via Blackboard. Right? Okay, again, revealing archaeology and the information there. When it asks you for the pass key for the class, not your own personal password, but the pass key for the class, it's huyuk, H-O-Y-U-K. This is a Turkish word that means mound. We'll talk more about that. Right? Okay. Um, labs, right? Uh, we've already looked at. I'm going to give you more information uh, in a few weeks about the final project. In the final project, you will be collecting data in a cemetery. You will not be doing any digging, though, because that would be illegal. But you will be looking at headstones, taking pictures, and writing down information from headstones uh, th through different time periods in order to analyze a number of different variables through time in a community. It could be your community where you're from. It could be Allendale. It could be downtown Grand Rapids. But you will look at things like health, status, beliefs over time uh, from the archaeology, from the material remains of that society. Right? It ends up being a fun project, I think. Okay, I have my grade scale, uh, information about um, support. If you uh, need, let's say, certain accommodations, please talk to the uh, the support um, office on campus. Right? We, talk, we talked a little bit about the goals for the class. I will give you an outline each week for the course videos to give you an idea of some of the things that you should be taking notes on, you know, uh, highlighting some of the important things. Uh, it will help you keep, stay on track as you're watching the videos. Right? Okay, well, I have the, the class kind of divided into thirds. Um, so in the first third, we, we look at sort of the basic field work. So this is, we talk about how archaeology started, how archaeology works, uh, a little bit about the history of archaeology. We're going to do one kind of dating technique, right, uh, in week two. Um, you can see at the end of week two, that Friday, your very first revealing archaeology assignment will be due. I will give you more information about how revealing archaeology works. Uh, week three, we're going to look at the, the kinds of research questions archaeologists are interested in, along with something called taphonomy. Uh, we're going to be looking at a little bit of eBay and the antiquities market, and also experimental archaeology with uh, atlatls. Um, then we're going to get into how archaeologists find sites. This is known as uh, survey. And then how archaeologists excavate, how they actually dig sites. Uh, and then we will have a little bit, start getting a little bit into dating techniques. So the uh, second portion of the class is focused on the materials that you get when you excavate. So pottery and stone tools and animal bones and things like that. How archaeologists analyze these different things. So we do a week on pottery. We do a week on um, climate data, right? So looking at seeds. Uh, we do uh, a week on stone tools, a week on animal bones. Uh, and then we start getting into the different ways we can tie all this together. So we have a week where we look at the use of science in archaeology, uh, osteology or analysis of human skeletal remains. Um, we look at some of the big picture issues uh, surrounding um, the analysis of human remains, but also some of the uh, modern legislation in the United States surrounding it called uh, NAGPRA. We'll look at historical archaeology. We'll talk about what that is. The last week of class will be kind of a bringing all these things together and showing how they all fit together and all the different pieces work. Uh, and this will be when your cemetery project uh, will be due. The uh, final exam will be during the final exam week. And again, it will not be cumulative, but based on the last third of the class. Let's look a little bit at the website. So I have the website with uh, these uh, sort of 
different sections over here. Uh, you know, the begin here section takes you to the introduction of the videos. Each week I'm going to post the videos, the outline, and the labs that you should be working on. Uh, the videos will all be on a separate YouTube playlist just for the course, so it won't get uh, confused with anything else. Uh, I will have information about the final project in some of these uh, different folders. You will be submitting your work uh, via Blackboard uh, as well. So that is about it for right now. I will be posting more videos soon, but for now, just get yourself oriented and I will check in with you later.